Well, hello. Welcome to uh, January 22nd, 2023. My name is Kurt, and this is my daily Good Life Meditation video. Something that I do every morning shortly after waking up. It's uh, 4.34 a.m. right now. Good morning, Parker. I make this video in order to do three main things. One, to think about the last 24 hours and how I did handling the challenges and opportunities that I met. Two, to enumerate categorically uh, each of the objectives and principles in the Good Life Creed, which is my personal uh, arrangement of, of how I live my life. It's the objectives that I'm striving for and the principles that I use to help me along the way. And these are uh, communicated in my book, Going Alone, in the chapter, The Good Life. I then finish off by uh, planning for the coming day, thinking about what I'm going to be doing today and trying to maybe forecast and anticipate whatever challenges and opportunities I might meet so I can be better ready to, ready to face them and to deal with them in the most adult and forthright and uh, virtue-yielding way. All right, let's begin. First, uh, last night and yesterday. I slept all right last night. I did wake up in the pre-dawn hours. Um, well, it's still the pre-dawn hours, but I did wake up before the pre-alarm hours, uh, just spilling about in my mind uh, the various uh, items related to the turmoil that will come of the of our, of our upcoming trip to Japan, which is less than two weeks away now. Turmoil insofar as my uh, projects at work will have to go on without me, and they're in very capable hands, they'll be fine. But still, I worry and fret. Also turmoil in terms of uh, upset to the daily routine that I'm used to and how I'll make sure that everything gets done that needs to get done here on the home front while we're gone. And I think I kind of sorted all that out in my mind, but not completely. But who, 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 who can I, how can I make it completely? It's not the routine, right? This is, I'm headed into a period of, uh, of you know, upset to my routine. I should expect upset, right? Reasonable expectations. Other than that, yesterday was a phenomenal day. One of the best days ever. I mean, ever. Really good day. Had a fun day with my wife and daughter. A good walk with the dogs. Um, we went out, celebrated Emily uh, getting an internship in Japan in the summer. Just, et cetera, et cetera. Really good day. Now, I know that life has its um, moments, right? And I did have kind of a sour moment, sour evening the night before yesterday, so maybe that took care of it. But I kind of have to anticipate the pendulum swing, right? I should be on the lookout. Today might be more of a challenge. But am I script writing when I do that, forecasting it? Perhaps. There's no reason that it has to be like that. Anyway, I'll get today. I'll get to today in just a minute. For now, let's do the good life. First, my seven objectives, which are as follows. Number one, to be always ready to die. To have my life affairs and relationships and my mission uh, in good order so that I'm done, if not yet finished. Number two, is to make good and effective use of my time. To not let my days just waste away. So that when I come to discover that I have, uh, I'm going to die, or if I suddenly begin gasping with, a, with the death of a heart attack or an aneurysm, and I'm going out in, in mere seconds, it'll be um, not all right necessarily, but oh well. <laughs> at least, my, at least my, 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 I used, made good use of the time. Number three is to uh, develop and maintain good and sound life objectives and principles, which I do each and every day through this very endeavor that I'm undertaking right now, the good life, meditation. I talk about these and work on them. Speaking of which, I have some work to do today. Um, I'll get to that in just a second. Number four is to cultivate good emotional reactions, to become a man who reacts well to life ups and downs. Number six is to recognize my true limits. And my, oh, 
no, to, to do good to perform good actions, to do good things throughout the day, where good is not some general un unidentified thing. It is specifically working to improve the well-being of thinking creatures, improving their betterness, their happiness, their, uh, their health, their, their wealth, their integrity, everything, everything that shades the color of virtue. Oh, I see a little drip. Okay, next is to uh, recognize my true limits and my true opportunities so that I'm uh, staying within the lines of what is possible and recognizing what is beyond my reach. And then lastly, to do just one thing at a time and do that thing slowly and deliberately and carefully. Okay, those are my seven objectives. Now for my 33, 34 actually, principles. Number one is the principle of war. A uh, recommendation to always be fighting against what I think is true so that I can be disabused of my error when uh, it's possible to discover it. Number two is, to, uh, is the principle of reason, which is the instrument that I use in the aforementioned war. And it has four sub-principles. Excuse me, Lava. <laughs> the four sub principles are honesty, being honest with myself and others, objectivity, looking at things straight and clear, doubt, fierce skepticism regarding all things that are important, and humiliation, the readiness to be gratefully embarrassed when I discover that I'm wrong. My third principle is um, the homunculus, a reminder that I don't have a soul, none of us do, but I do have a consciousness, and I label that the, the homunculus, the little man within the man. Number four is the um, anchor hold, the place where the homunculus lives, suffers, and ultimately dies, recognizing that this... Uh, Mortal coil will uh, fall to pieces before, before very long. And uh, when it does so, when it winks out, the uh, consciousness will go with me and that will be the end of me forever. Next is uh, perp sorry, the home of good and evil. Right and wrong don't reside in the universe at large. They exist as mere opinions in our minds. As such, it's important that we take efforts to uh, cultivate good ideas about what constitute good and evil, right and wrong. And there is a difference. Right and wrong are the uh, directions of virtue. Good and evil are uh, instantiations of genuine effort to uh, achieve either of those ends. Next comes the principle of purpose, the aim of life. And I identify three types of purpose. Number one is the biological sense of purpose, the mission and mandate to uh, mate, reproduce, and raise children into adulthood. Two is the uh, purpose of virtue, not a mandate, but a worthwhile end, where virtue, again, is seeking after the improvement of the well-being of thinking creatures. And number three is whatever personal purpose I choose for my life. And for me, at this point in my life, Given that my daughter is nearly raised and grown, I choose my purpose to be the sharing of my message and story in the book going along. And this, this video is part of that sharing. Next uh, is the atomic principle. Everything is made of bits and pieces, and it's all falling to pieces, including us. 
and then the principle of nature. Everything and everyone has a particular nature, and it's good to recognize what that is so that we can live in better accord with that. Then comes the pirate ride. Free will is a, an all-too-convincing illusion, but we're not really free. We are compatible with the universe at large. And then maturity and the sub-principles of wisdom, fortitude, and integrity. Maturity is a state that we arrive at when we have experience and the wisdom to do better and to avoid our mistakes. And then we can enjoy the integrity of a life lived in balance and harmony with our values. Next comes the social principle. We are social creatures. We need each other. And our best ends are social ends. The sub-principles here are diplomacy, what we do to work together to come to an agreement regarding the next sub-principle, what constitutes justice. And then conspiracy, the third sub-principle here, is what we do when we link arms to uh, seek after that end. Next comes to the principle of family, a recommendation to form a family of our own. We can do it in the conventional sense with a, a ring and a promise, or by simply creating a community of uh, individuals who have a common interest, uh, a pleasant pleasure in one another's company, or whatever it is that bonds people together. But it's good to have our people. Next comes public speaking, which is a recommendation to learn to listen and speak well. And write well. The sub principles here are best words, cultivating a rich and deep vocabulary, and then using that vocabulary well. Prudence, the ability to filter our meaning, our language with our values, through our values, so that they come out representing what we value most. Felicity, the ability to filter our communication through our emotions so that we season it with uh, our humanity. Eloquence, the estate achieved through modeling and practice. And then finally, two negative uh, elements of public speaking are engaging in rumors, spreading rumors, and uh, sharing gossip, which are very bad things. All right, next is um, temperance, the ability to control our consumption of the world, of all things. The next principle is life will not go well. Expect speed bumps and difficulties along the way, especially when we vary the way things are done. The next principle is the horror show. Sometimes the difficulties of life go to the nth degree and become horrifying and expect we should expect that for others and ourselves it's part and parcel of the package of life next is that which must be born carried we have to carry the fact of the uh, that life won't go well and the terror and awfulness of the horror show next comes the feast of awful which is the waste and byproduct of our intemperate living. What we spew out when uh, we uh, have had enough and we, in so doing, soil and upset those around us. And it's also what happens when others are doing the same and we choose to consume it. So I, I choose to not engage in the feast. I don't spew it out. I try not to. And I keep my mouth shut when others are doing the same. I'll be there to offer a hand and support and a tissue and a shoulder to cry on, but... I won't be swallowing it down, or at least I I'll try not to. Next comes distraction. It's what we do to keep ourselves busily occupied so that we don't have to see the next principle, the great indifference, a universe without God or gods. We're on our own. So we distract ourselves with our work and our play and our hobbies and our sports and our politics and our gossip and our religion and our God, all the while, so that we don't have to uh, realize that we're alone and responsible for our own well-being and happiness and, in, and uh, integrity. 
Next comes the best seat in the house to strive to be all right with who I am, where I am, and what I'm doing, all the while striving for better. Next is uh, the restless man, that sense of unease that we feel in our late teens and 20s that we can assuage through an adventure. You know, watch out, because if we don't, it tends to not go away. If we take that adventure, then we have to step upon the next principle, which is the path of wildness, the way forward and up into new life, which yields the next principle, a great life adventure, which is our story. The next principle after that is the uh, risk of avoiding risk. There's a, a deep risk that we may go too far on one side or the other of the pendulum swing, either taking too much adventure in life and not attending to the need to settle down, create a family, a home, a career, and security for ourselves. The other extreme is to do too much of the latter, and then not to attend to the uh, restlessness that we feel. In either case, we wind up too far on one side or the other. It's better to try to balance somewhere in between, but that's hard too. The path I recommend is to take the great life adventure after university and before age 30. And then after age 30, settle down and uh, build the life and the career and the home and the family and the security and the readiness for old age. Next comes uh, sin and damnation. There are three broad categories of sin in my worldview. The first of these is to be untrue to ourselves and others. The second broad category is to believe things for bad reasons. And the third is to um, uh, be either a spreading rumors or sharing gossip. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so there are eight of them in total. I mean, now get down to the details. Um, honesty, being honest. No, no, I'm getting all mixed up. <laughs> the sin and contamination consists of falsity, being untrue, credulity, believing things too readily, Faith, believing things where the belief is the foundation, which is nonsense. Superstition, categorical nonsense. Uh, dogma, belief based on tradition and doc doctrine. Six is authority, belief based on the authority of the charisma of who, the, who is expounding that belief. And then rumors and gossip, which are sins too. Engage in any of these sins and we wind up damned in the here and now. Next comes complete oblivion. After death, there is nothing to follow because we have no soul. There is no God, no heaven, no afterlife. We'll never see our loved ones again. Therefore, there will be no final reunion with them, no chance to have final reconciliation, and there will be no final justice. We have to attend to those important endeavors now while we have the chance and before we're dead. Not that it will matter. We won't know when we're dead. <laughs> but it matters in the here and now. Next comes uh, the principle of script writing, a trick and skill that can be developed to forecast the minutes, hours, and days ahead to plan out how we're going to live our life. And it yields incredible results when uh, done uh, uh, in, a, in, in, a, in a diligent manner, persistent manner, not letting the mind uh, take off on its own to wander down whatever merry paths of of a negative thought that it can come up with, but instead to take the reins and to plan out a more positive ends. The next principle is called the bullseye aim, a reminder that in spite of our best plans, we probably won't always hit the mark. In fact, we usually won't hit the mark. It's rare when we do hit the mark like a bullseye. Instead, expect to miss and be pleased with getting as close as we can. Next comes the uphill climb. Life is an upward advance, where up is not in the direction of anything in particular other than improving the well-being of thinking creatures, improving virtue, and improving ourselves to become better vehicles to, towards those ends. The next is the arena and utility. Life is this arena where we can develop uh, principles and objectives to help us to better achieve the ends of virtue. 
Next is, nothing is enough. A simple reminder towards simplicity. And then last, the last principle is the principle of fun. A reminder to, to strive to have a good time, to enjoy today, to enjoy tomorrow, you know, planning for tomorrow, and enjoy the remembrance of yesterday. There it is, my good life creed. Now, the last part of this exercise is to plan for the coming day. And today I'm going to uh, work hard to uh, prepare for our trip. So I'll finish this, I'll upload this, I'll then read my Bible, I'll uh, feed the dogs, let the dogs out or take them for a walk if they want. I might go to the beach and run on the beach in the, for the dawn, why not? Um, to make up for them that I missed it yesterday and then do it again in the evening. And then from there, I'll come back and I'll work on my uh, updating my book. And oh, and then whatever we need to do, we'll finish off our planning for the trip. I need to squeeze in some cleaning today. So, Kurt, be a little more organized. After I get back from my jog, I'll take a, I'll take a shower because I might jump in the ocean too. Um, although it'll be cold. And then I'll, um, oh, from there, I will uh, clean the house, do our shopping, and then prepare for our trip. All right, with that, I'm done. Be safe, but not too safe. And with that, my life is done, if not finished. Take care.